And meanwhile, we have a pandemic, uh, the coronavirus rising in 40, 50 states. There, um, there's some, you know, uh, research to suggest that a big part of it is restaurant, indoor restaurant eating. And I know that has been uh, in New York City. It has been uh, sort of punted with the hopes that maybe we can keep this under control and, and get school to some extent for kids. Uh, I've seen a lot of mixed data about instances where kids can transmit, where kids can contract. I'm talking young kids. Um, and all the data is mixed. And, you know, when we look across the country in 40 or 50 states, what we clearly have here is a massive, massive failure of, of federal leadership. There's a reason why 200 years ago plus it was, it was considered a smart thing to do to create a federation of, of states, to have a powerful federal government that um, could marshal forces in a way that 50 distinct units, it wasn't 50 at the time, um, cannot. And we've had a total abdication and failure, both an abdication and failure. Maybe the failure came after the abdication, maybe it became, I'm not sure. But uh, we'll leave that up to the history books. But meanwhile, Donald Trump wants you to know that COVID is getting under control. It's nice that he's saying it in a passive sense because these guys don't want any ownership of this. And it's, it's as if they think the American public isn't looking in, at this and going like, wait, what? This is your job, dude. Here is uh, Donald Trump. Europe was way early and they're getting under control. We followed them with this terrible China virus. And uh, we are likewise getting under control. Some areas that were very hard hit are now doing very well. Some were doing very well and we thought they may be gone or they flare up and we're putting out the fires. But other places were long before us and they're now, it's a life, it's got a life. And we're putting out that life because that's a bad life that we're talking about. Um, I, I think what he's trying to say is that, like, the virus is not going away, uh, but we're trying to get rid of it. This is a guy whose whole campaign right now seems to be um, that Joe Biden is uh, mentally incompetent to serve as president. And I got to tell you, um, A glass houses but b i don't think that anybody well i don't i don't i don't know if this is you know and this may be a little bit of an overstatement but i don't think it's uh, too much of one i don't know if there's any single individual who is uh not going to vote against donald trump because of the revelation that joe biden might be mentally incompetent like, honestly, like, I don't know if there's like one, one vote. In fact, the people least likely to vote for Joe Biden because they're not voting against Donald Trump or don't want to just exclusively vote for Donald Trump. I think the fact that Joe Biden might not have uh, all his marbles is probably an upside. Right. Like people who are unhappy with Joe Biden's political uh, agenda. The idea that Joe Biden might be a weak president in some way. Um, is, I think, probably an upside. Do you guys think there's a single person who goes like, you know, I was going to vote for Joe Biden, but now I'm starting to think that like he might be, I don't know, not all there. Do you think there is a voter out there, like like one voter who's going to think that way? No, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that person would look like. I honestly, like, I can't even. I, I like what? What is the possible scenario? 
Th these guys are really, uh, they cannot figure out how to deal with this. And it's all over the place. Yeah, it's interesting to see all the stories pop up now saying, like, speculating that Trump will drop out in some way or that he's, like, you know, beginning to fear, like, the lo like losing. And I don't know how that's going to, like, impact their decision-making process over the summer either before we get to the fall. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy any of that. Stuff. I don't either. But um, it is... I think it's just, I, I, I think it's a way, I think the, the, I, I think it's, that's deployed strategically, the theory being that it's going to discourage Trump even more, um, which, it, which it very well may. Here's Donald Trump um, trying to run on something positive. Here's Donald Trump like trying to remind people, you got to look on the bright side of things. The unemployment rate fell by more than two percentage points, down to just about 11 percent. We're down to the 11 percent number. We started at a number very much higher than that. As you know, we broke the record last month, and we broke it again this month in an even bigger way. This news comes on top of May. There you go. The unemployment rate is down to 11 percent. The other thing that's sort of amazing about this is that they don't seem to have any sense of urgency about uh, the huge impending crises that are about to hit. We're going to have a crisis in terms of people who uh, uh, extended unemployment benefits are going to run out. We're going to have a crisis in terms of, of, of having these shutdowns again. There, there's going to be a lot of businesses that are going to go under because they opened for this early uh, shutdown, uh, open, opening up, and they're going to have to go back in. And they're not going to make it. We're going to see the unemployment numbers go the other direction. I'm convinced within a month, maybe two, you know, maybe less, maybe, maybe two months. There's about to be a massive disaster in commercial real estate. Apparently there's going to be a problem at one point in maybe it's in 2021. Maybe it's at the end of this year where all of these commercial loans reset. Does everybody remember this dynamic from the 2008 crisis? One of the big problems were that people got these loans that after five years or after three years, the rate would reset. And that's what's happening in the, the commercial loan business. A lot of people took out loans and they're going to reset at a different higher rate. And it's going to be a problem. So, uh, I don't know. Donald Trump's sitting there bragging about 11% unemployment. Wasn't that why Hillary Clinton, like one of the reasons why people felt Hillary Clinton lost? She was going around saying America is already great when we were at 3 or 4% unemployment. Mm -hmm. And now, have they, I also read that they actually dropped the slogan, keeping America great because people were like, mm, oh, yeah, I don't know if that's actually going to, but you can't say make America great again because you've been president for four years now. Remember our previous unemployment rate. That's the new slogan. What was the one that they were uh, trotting out at the beginning of this? Uh, was it some it pivot to greatness or something like that? <laughs> Yes. I don't remember what it was. I can't exactly. remember what it was. It was bad. transition to greatness, transition which to greatness. I feel like was like an, I feel like there's an anti-trans slap in the face there, but I might be paranoid. Re, re transition to greatness from where it was five months ago. Uh, folks, 